Hey guys, how's it going? I'm here back again with another review. Um, sorry, I know I say the word um a lot and I'm gonna say it forever until I get really good at these videos until I have no crutches. Um, word crutches, I guess you could say. But anyways, here's this phone. As you can tell by the title, it's the Rogue Phone 2. Um, and this is my review of it. I'm gonna try to go by fast on this. I'm gonna start with the uh, negatives. Some of the negative things about this phone that I've noticed. Um, one thing, it's not t it's not a 2K screen. It's not 1440p. It's a 1080p panel, which you know what? It's not bad. It's AMOLED. Uh, it has a really deep inky blacks. Mm. It uh, it runs smoothly. You know, I haven't had any problems. I've been using it for about a month, month now, maybe five weeks. It was my daily driver for that long. I recently just switched back to my OnePlus 7 Pro, which I prefer. Um, I think the interface, the software is just better on that. I just recently reset this one. I had a... I'm actually selling it here in a little bit, so I'm going to do a review right quick. But anyways, another negative that I noticed, um, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's a, it's a heavy phone, man. Like, No matter how you slice it, it's pretty bulky. You know, a 6,000 milliamp hour battery is no joke. I wish I could kind of compare it to another phone, but I don't have any other phone at this moment. But it's, I mean, it looks kind of thin right there, but it is very, very, very heavy. I'm not sure on the weight. You guys can check that out. Um, but yeah, the, the heaviness, you kind of, you know, once it's in your in your hand for a while, you you start to feel the fatigue for sure. And not only that, if it falls on the floor, it's more than likely going to crack the back if you don't have a case on it. So watch out for that. Be careful. Uh, another negative, the camera. The camera's not that great. Uh, I use it quite a bit to just kind of capture pictures and they're just, you know, unimpressive. Sure, they get the job done if you're just kind of taking a picture to take a picture. It's cool. But it doesn't really have any features. It has the bokeh effect. But the bokeh effect isn't very, very good. The OnePlus 7 Pro bokeh effect are actually better. Actually better than the, uh, here, I'll take a picture of this controller here. And you guys can kind of see here. Okay, I don't know what that is. Okay. Okay, now it's not red on the red background, so it's kind of hard to tell, but it's kind of cool. I mean, it's all right. You know, obviously, I wish I could just put them on there and you guys could see it better, but it looks cool. Um, right here, you can see that the that the buttons are blurry, and this is part is clear, so I didn't really... It's the red. kind of blended all in. It's my fault, but anyways. I mean, the camera's cool, like I said. If you're just taking pictures to take pictures, if you're not really looking to edit them or... Or make them look super flashy, you know, or they're just social media pictures. They're okay. But it's it's just not a strong suit of this phone. Um, what else can I think of the negatives? I did, a, I did see a recent review, and it's not as fast as the Red Magic 3 or the 3S. So that's another thing to think about. Um, another thing, I, would, I don't, I don't want to say that it's a negative, but it's something that I was not impressed about, and I mentioned it in my previous video with the HTC One Eleven One Eleven U Eleven. U12 Plus, is that the battery was not as good as I thought it was going to be. I switched from my iPhone Pro Max to the OnePlus 7 Pro, and then to this one, okay, as my actual daily drivers, and the OnePlus 7 Pro compared to the iPhone Pro Max is just nothing, it's just trash compared to it, you know, it's okay, you know, right now that I'm using it, it gets the job done, it gets me through a day and, and a little bit extra sometimes. Uh, the iPhone though, it's crazy, man. It, it, I always had like 43%. I would game, I would social media, watch YouTube, and I would always had a 40%, 37% on it at the, at the end of the day, right when I was going to charge it. And it was crazy. I used, I'm a heavy user, so I was very impressed with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The OnePlus 7 Pro, not impressed. This one, I thought, oh, you know, it's a freaking 6,000 milliamp hour battery. It's good, but it's not as good as the iPhone, Pro, iPhone 11 Pro Max. But it is good. You know, now that I've had it more like you never need to charge it really like it's you're never going to be like oh my gosh i need a charger unless you're using it for like two days straight keep in mind that is with 120 hertz i always kept it 120 hertz uh i recently went back to 60 hertz just to see how it would do and i would i didn't charge it all the way because i had already stopped using it but i just used it to play some pool and stuff and uh it was better way better i mean let's say i'm playing pool at 120 hertz now keep in mind the pool app does use the 120 hertz fully it actually uses the 120 frames per second to game that will last me maybe like 
after about an hour straight of playing, yeah, I play a lot of pool. It would probably die about 15, 20%, you know? I know it's kind of a rough estimate. With the 60 hertz, after an hour of play, it was like maybe 7% of battery drainage. So that's pretty cool. I mean, if you're just going to use it at 60%, you want it to last all day long, you don't care about the smoothness, then it's good. But if it's 120 hertz, it's going to be a good battery. Good battery. But that's not an amazing battery. Like, you're not going to get 6,000 milliamp hours worth. I mean, think about most phones from two years ago were 3,000 to 3,300 milliamp hours. The Galaxy S8 Plus, what, two, three years old? Uh, that's a 3,300 milliamp hour battery. The LG V40 was a 3,300 milliamp hour battery. So this has 2,700 milliamp hours more. Granted, the screen is slightly larger, 6.53 inches. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's 1080p. So, you know, I just thought it was going to be amazing. Day and a half, you know, not bad. But the, the iPhone Pro Max would almost last me two days. And that's on a 4, 3,993 milliamp hours, I believe. Or maybe 3,969, something like that. But yeah, so that's another thing that I was not impressed by, not a negative... Definitely not impressed by it. Uh, let's go on to the positives. I think it's a really cool looking phone, honestly. I love the glass back. Uh, I like this little thing. If you do a jury rig everything guy, he does a little, oh, he opens it up and you can see everything, all the internals, and it's really efficient with cooling. I do feel the screen get hot when I game for a long time, but that's why I have this little thing. It came with a little external fan that I do use, and I like that because you can, you can use it for gaming and the cool thing about this little attachment is that you put it in the back you can put headphones and a charger at the bottom so that when you're gaming not only is it cooling it but you can hold it with two hands really cool and you can still use the triggers which brings me into my next one the triggers man are super cool man if you never gamed with triggers from, from PUBG you, you, you're, you're, you, do you even game bruh? Because those triggers change the game for me. Makes it so much better. You can shoot and move at the same time. You're not taking up any of the screen real estate with your thumbs. Uh, as far as like the shooting part, you can. it's cool, man. It's super cool. You got to do it. You got, I had the Red Magic 3S before this. I'm sorry, the Red Magic 3. And it was amazing with the triggers. And that's why I got this one. I saw it for sale locally, and I got it. Um, so the triggers, game changer. I've only used it with PUBG. I did try and use it with... Um, more modern mortal warfare i don't know something like that and uh it was cool too you know but my favorite was definitely PUBG. i mean it's just huge difference you if you want to get kind of competitive with it you have you have to get the triggers i have used the external triggers the physical triggers on other but on other phones where like you put them on and then you trigger with it i actually have it right here it's a little remote this thing i have this and you just put this on your phone and then it and it's cool but I think this is made more for like smaller phones. Uh, I'm just gonna kind. Of, this is pretty similar to most phones that you have nowadays. And see how it's long, and it kind of doesn't doesn't settle in right. So, yeah, I did use it with the iPhone Pro Max. It was cool. It was chilling. Anyways, um, another positive: the 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 the, the lights. Everybody asks me, "Ooh, where are those lights? That's so cool." That's pretty cool, honestly. Like X mode, that right there. You can change the notification. To where it's red, uh, I actually changed it to where whenever my girlfriend would text me, hers was purple, her little thing, and it would turn purple on the back, so I know she texts me. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what else? The interface, uh, compared to the Red Magic 3, Red Magic 3, you couldn't do the dark theme. You actually can on this, and that's super cool. And I, I en ended up changing the theme to where it was red and black, which are my favorite colors, and that was super cool. I really, really appreciated that. That was awesome as heck. Um, and so those are the main things I mean that I liked about this phone. The speakers are incredible. You want to watch movies and stuff like that. Gaming, they're freaking loud. I kind of felt bad sometimes. My girlfriend was asleep when I'd be playing PUBG, and when you get shot up in the block in PUBG, because you need to hear the footsteps, right? But then when the gunshots would come out, she'd get so like, oh shoot, she get super scared. But I ended up just using a headset, and that helps a lot too. Uh, gaming was amazing on this phone. The gaming experience is un unlike any other. Better than the Red Magic 3S, or the 3, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, but better than the Red Magic. Uh, better than any other phone, hands down, man. Not as fast, apparently, according to those reviews, as the Red Magic 3, but I thought I was really happy with this phone using it. Other than the, the weight, the camera, um, 
and the battery not being as amazing as I thought. Other than that, it was it was really good. It was a really good phone. Uh, the only reason I'm getting rid of it now is because I really like the OnePlus 7 Pro's sleek design. I have a case on it; it looks really cool on it. Um, even though even though the battery is smaller, it lasts okay. Um, and it's just the operating system is just better. It's just more practical. This is good for gaming. If you're a hardcore gamer, I would consider to have this as an extra phone if you can afford it. Right now, you can get them from like 500 to 550. Even 550 it's used on eBay. I got this for 500 bucks on OfferUp. Uh, and this is the Strix Edition, which I haven't even seen that much about it. But it comes with a little fan. It comes with a case that you can you can still put the fan on with. And a 30-watt charger. Oh, the fast charging was really cool, too. Charger, fast charging works really well. After like 30 minutes, you get a good like 60%. That's cool. Um, but yeah, and there you go. Uh, you can see the design there. It's probably pretty cool. Look, it has glare. Those are not scratches. Those are glare. And that's it, man. If you have any questions about the phone, feel free to ask me. I'm selling it now, so I won't have it anymore. But uh, I'll, if anything that I, you guys want to ask me about it, I'll let you know. Uh, I wish I would have done a OnePlus 7 Pro comparison. If I still had an extra phone, I would have done that to record on, but I don't. Um, if I was going to go head-to-head -head on them real quick, obviously battery is better on this. Camera's a lot better on the OnePlus 7 Pro. I think they've, they've updated it a lot to where like a lot of the things work really well on it now. Screen resolution, the OnePlus 7 Pro has it. You know, even though it's only 90 hertz, uh, you know, 1440p, you can't beat that. Uh, I, us I usually run at 1080p just for battery efficiency on the OnePlus 7 Pro. Um, just the operating system. You, uh, you guys should know if you see enough OnePlus 7 Pro operating systems, how good it is. It, they Apparently, everyone agrees that it's better than even Pixel. It's vanilla Android. They just know how to make it really efficient. It's a good phone. Um, but yeah, so goodbye to this phone. It was great having it. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.